Hello and welcome to another episode of the N64 Japanese Eye. As always, this is the show where we cast our eyes over an N64 Japanese exclusive game and try to answer the simple question Can you play and enjoy it without knowing any Japanese whatsoever? One of the reasons many games became Japanese exclusives at the time was for the simple fact that outside of the unique Japanese culture, many of the games would have struggled to become cost effective for developers to get published in the West. I've already covered a few in this series, and today's game is no exception. Now, I know there's a dedicated community of train spotters all over the world, but in all honesty, how many of them would have had a Nintendo 64 console back in the day? And furthermore, who would have been interested in a game where you're driving trains across Japanese regions? It's not a surprise that the long-running Densha de Go series of games never really had a reason to leave the land of the rising sun. Add to that the poor sales of even this N64 release in its native country certainly makes this one of the more unique games on the system. The basic overview of the game is that you choose a route and train to drive on real-life tracks across Japan, following set routes and stops based on the train route you are driving, whilst adhering to rules and regulations such as speed limits and the world-renowned punctuality that Japanese trains are certainly known for. On paper, this sounds like one of the dullest simulation games anyone could dream of. But as usual, Taito has put their own spin on it and created something far more interesting. Now right off the bat I will say that if you don't speak Japanese then you could just about fumble your way around the controls and menus and pretty much figure out just about what to do. However, I'm going to give a big shout out to one of the most talented members of the N64 modding scene, Zoinkity, whom has recently released a patch for the game which does a wonderful job of converting much of it into English. Add to that, the game is fully playable on a flash cart, this instantly makes this one of my favourite packs. Simply put, if you've ever been curious about this game but have been put off by it being in Japanese, there has never been a better time to give it a try. Jumping into the game you have some basic menus and dipping into the options menu will give you everything you'd expect from being able to adjust the sound to the difficulty levels. I would suggest that if you're new to the game you jump straight into the beginners mode where you'll have a chance to take the game's full tutorial which will give you the basics needed to go any further in the game. And there is also a practice mode where you can get to grips with some of the easier courses to help you brush up on your skills such as departures, stops and managing speed limits. Interestingly, the game has fully licensed trains. I kid you not, even the most diehard train fan would get a kick out of this, but it does add a cool element to the game in a sense that every train needs to be managed completely differently. Take for example the express trains. Sure, you'll have higher speeds and less stops to make, but being able to quickly drop the speed at short notice when you're about to enter a restricted speed zone takes great skill. Likewise, when you're operating one of the local trains and are stopping at pretty much every station along the route, you'll need to become a master at quick departures and accurate stopping in order to have any hope of advancing. What makes the game so interesting is the pure arcade-like nature of the gameplay. Sure, it's a train driving simulator which sounds about as interesting as watching paint dry, but in reality the game is packed full of crazy taxi-like time limits, which keeps the momentum of the game flowing. Getting to a station too late or early will hit you with a penalty, as will speeding in certain areas which will grind down your time score. Likewise, your accuracy is rewarded and remembering to sound your horn as you approach a bridge will give you a time bonus for compliant driving. It's a game which I was expecting to become frustrated with and easily bored with, but each route leaves you with the sense of just needing one more go to get an overall better ranking and improve your score. What turned into a quick hour or so playing the game eventually turned into half a day of often being on the verge of rage quitting, but being completely entertained enough to want to carry on playing. It's sadistic, challenging and ultimately rewarding as laying down a perfect run is intensely satisfying in a funny old way. Now graphically the game isn't a looker, as you can see the scenery is grainy and the game doesn't give much sense of speed with its low but solid frame rate. It's not a game you spend much time looking at the views however, with your skills being divided between looking at the various signs on screen and juggling the controls and alerts, that's when you really get into the swing of it you'll find that you're really paying much attention to what's right in front of you because there's really no need to. The game sounds to do the job 
and I'm sure a train spotter is eventually going to pop up in the comments and tell me the decibels of the HK100 train, uh, something like 0.73% too loud, but for everyone else who isn't a virgin, you'll find that the train noises do the job and the various horns, platform noises and ambient noise doesn't distract you from your attention to driving in the gameplay. There's limited music in the menus and in between stages, but what is there is catchy enough to really leave you entertained without becoming annoying, and it's certainly not overused to the point that you want to mute your TV. Sadly though, I really feel like I'm missing out on the studio's intended experience with the game. That's because the official Densha to go controller is something I've often coveted for a while now, but I've never actually been able to get my hands on. The controller was designed to be used exclusively with the game and it makes it a much more immersive experience from what I've been told, as well as making the controls more intuitive. Add to that, you can also use the voice recognition unit to further enhance the gameplay by calling out station names which is something I've yet to try, but once again Zoinkity enabled the mod patch to understand English commands, which is something pretty sweet. I'll put a link in the description below to the video where you can see more of this in action if you wanted to check it out and I'll also put a link to the English patch as well. So what I was left with was the game's basic controls on the N64 controller which do the job but at times it can feel fiddly as the layout isn't all that easy to get to grips with in my opinion. There are other layouts in the options menu so perhaps try messing around with which setting works best for you if like me you don't have the official controller for this game. All being said, this is a game which I think many people have overlooked for far too long. Sure, it's not a system seller or a game which will ever gain mass market appeal, but for those who have rinsed the N64 library over the years and are looking for a new, fresh and certainly unique title, then the English translation patch could be just a ticket you've been waiting for to get a new experience from the machine. Add to that the game is fully packed of easter eggs and perfectly balances the points based score system, this really is a game I think you should try. Play it for an hour or so and if you don't like it, you will easily pull it down. But I expect that like myself, many of you will find this insanely addictive. And before you know it, you'll be spending hours trying the many different routes and trains in the game, having an absolute blast. And so for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know if you've played any of the other Densha to Go games on other systems or in the arcades over the years. Have you ever played this version before and if so, did you play it with the full controller setup? I'd also love to know what you think the most bizarre concept for any N64 game was. As always, sound off in the comment section down below, and until next time.